So let us now understand the formation of images using a concave mirror. So what do we have? We have a source of light, that is a candle. We have a screen on which we will obtain the image and here we have a concave mirror. So first of all, what we are going to do is we are going to shift our object that is the source of light at infinity. Let us do that first. Yes. So right now our object, our source of light is at infinity. So how are the rays of light going to travel? They are simply going to travel parallel to each other. Now when they travel parallel to each other and strike this mirror, we know that they are going to focus, concentrate at which point? At the focus. That means at which point the image will be formed? At the focus. That means we have to move the screen in such a manner that the image that we obtain is a sharp image. Right now the image is blur on the screen. Let us move the screen, let us adjust the screen and let's try to identify at which point we obtain a sharp image. Let's do that. So if I move the screen away from the mirror, you can see that the image is getting blur. That means we are supposed to move this screen towards the mirror. So let's do that. So yes, it's becoming clear, clear and yes, now you can see that the image formed on the screen is a sharp image. But what are the characteristics of this image? First of all, you can see that the image is very, very, very small. You can hardly see the flame of the candle, right? And also what you notice over here is that the image is inverted and it is also obtained on a screen. So which type of image is it? Absolutely correct. This is a real image and we know that real images are always, always, always inverted. So when the object is at infinity, where is the image formed? At the focus. So now let us bring our source of light back with us so that we can place our object over here. Now, so we have our source of light back with us. So right now what we understood was when the object was at infinity, the image form is at the focus. That means right now where we have the screen is which point? It is the focus denoted by capital F. So this is the concave mirror. That means here we'll have pole that is the center of the spherical mirror. And here we have focus that is capital F. So this is pole and this is focus. We know that distance between the pole and the focus is called as the focal length denoted by small letter F. That means this distance will also be equal to something else. What is that? Let us revise. We know that the focal length is half the radius of curvature. That means this distance is small f and this distance is also small f. Right? And if this distance is small f, we know that this point that we obtain is actually the center of curvature because the distance between the center of curvature and the pole is called as the radius of curvature. So now we have obtained all the points, pole, focus and the center of curvature. And right now we have our object beyond the center of curvature. Let's see how the image is formed and where the image is formed. As you can see right now, the image on the screen is a blur image. Now we have to adjust the screen in such a manner that we obtain a sharp image. Let's try and do that. So if I'm moving the screen closer to the mirror, you can see that the image is getting blurred. So we have to move the screen away from the mirror. So yes. So here you see, we have obtained a sharp image. What have we done? What we have done is we have moved the object from infinity beyond center of curvature. That means we have moved the object from infinity towards the mirror. But we have moved the screen away from the mirror, right? That means as we move the object closer to the mirror, the image is obtained away from the mirror. Now look at the image. What are the characteristics? It is slightly bigger than the previous image but it is still smaller than the actual flame of the candle. That means here the image is obtained on the screen. That means it is a real image. And we know that all real images are always inverted. Can you see the flame inverted? Yes, absolutely. And what about the size? It is diminished, right? So here we have obtained a real image, inverted image and a diminished image. But what is the position of the image? It is between F and C. So when you place the object beyond C, the image is obtained between F and C. That is focus and the center of curvature. 
Now, what we are going to do is, we are going to move the source of light towards the mirror once again and place it at the center of curvature. So right now, I have placed the object at the center of curvature. Now, let's move the screen, adjust the screen in such a manner that we obtain a sharp image. Now, we have moved the object towards the mirror. That means, where are we supposed to move the screen? Away from the mirror, right? Let's try and do that. Yes! So, as you can see, the image is obtained very close to the object. That means, whenever we place the object at the center of curvature, the image is also obtained at the center of curvature. What about the nature? What about the characteristics of the image? You can see that the image is slightly bigger than the previous one, but it is still inverted. And if you compare the size of the image with the actual flame of the candle, you will notice that both are of the same size. So, when you place the object at C, you obtain the image at C. And what about the characteristics? They are real, inverted and same size image. Now, again what we are going to do is, we are going to move this candle towards the mirror. Let's do that. So, here we have our source of light now between C and F. So, the object right now is between C and F. We know that we have moved our source of light towards the mirror. So, where are we supposed to move the screen? Away from the mirror, of course. So, let's move it. Yes, you can see that the image now is bigger, right? So, when the object is between C and F, the image obtained is beyond the center of curvature, you see. And what about the nature? It is real, it is inverted and this time it is magnified. It is greater in size than the actual flame. Now, let's move the object at the focus. As you can see, we cannot obtain a sharp image. Let's try to move it. But still, we are not able to obtain a sharp image. That means, we have to keep on increasing the distance. But till what distance do we have to move? We do not know that, right? That means, the image would be obtained at infinity. So, when we place the object at the focus, the image would be obtained at infinity. It would be obtained on the screen. That means, it would be a real inverted. But the size would be very, very big. That means, it is a highly magnified image. So, what conclusion can we draw from here? The conclusion that we can draw is, as we move the object closer to the mirror, the image is moving away from the mirror and also the size keeps on increasing. Now, what we are going to do is, we are going to move the source of light within the focal length. That means, right now the object is between the pole and the focus. Now, let's observe the screen. You can see that there is nothing formed on the screen right now. But if you look into the mirror, you can see the flame of the candle and the candle itself and the image would appear erect and it is also bigger in size. So here what we understand is, the moment we bring the object within the focal length, the size increases but the nature also changes. It becomes virtual and erect. So let us come to a conclusion now. When the object was at infinity, where was the image formed? At the focus. When the object was beyond C, image was between C and F. It was real, inverted and diminished. When the object was at C, image was also at C. It was real, inverted and same size. When the object was between C and F, image was beyond C. And it was real, inverted and magnified. When the object was at the focus, image was at infinity, real, inverted and highly magnified. But, whenever the object is within the focal length, that means between focus and the pole, we know that the image is virtual, erect and magnified. So, this is how we understood formation of images using actual demonstration. And yes, please do not forget to like, share, subscribe and press the bell icon.